Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event um, or webinar, webcast, online show, whatever you want to call us. Um, we're here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. Um, we do record our shows and post them on our YouTube account later, so you can always go back um, at your convenience and watch them. We include our um, recording of the show, um, any presentations or documents, like this, we've got some slides here um, that people have shared, and any websites that maybe have been mentioned. They have access to all of that afterwards, um, after the show. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your uh, Colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, anybody who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show, any of our upcoming shows or our archives, they're welcome to come and check them out. Um, at the end of today's show, I will show you where to get to all of those archives um, on our website. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Lives, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, um, demo, <coughs> demos of software or products or resources that we think libraries might be interested in. The only real criteria is that it is something library related, something um, libraries are doing, something um, we think they could be doing, um, some services or grants or opportunities we want to make them aware of. Um, that's really the only focus. Um, some of our topics, you may see a title and say, what, libraries? But trust me, that's what I always make sure everything has to do with libraries in the end. <laughs> um, we have Encompass, Encompass, Library, Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on the show um, sometimes, and we sometimes get bring in guest speakers, and we'll make sure of that today. Um, to my left is Mary Sowers, who is our Government Information Services Librarian here at the Library Commission, who's been collecting a lot of her information and resources and fielding all of our calls and requests about Eclipse-related things. Um, next to her is um, Shelley uh, Rudiboris yes. from Lincoln City Libraries, just up the street. She came and walked down here through a break in the rain. Really. <laughs> <laughs> some rain. Yes. Um, and then remotely on with us is Megan Bobs from um, Seward, Nebraska, Seward Memorial Library. Hello. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to hand over to Mary to get things started. They're going to tell us all about things that are going on in Nebraska um, related to the eclipse and libraries. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I think we have a fun show today um, as we talk about the total eclipse coming up next month, uh, August 21st, 2017, to be exact, 26 days, uh, roughly two hours, and about 10 minutes <laughs> you know, to, to really narrow it down there. Um, not only is this an, an extraordinary solar event, but it's also an amazing opportunity for libraries and other community organizations, um, you know, to uh, get together, to talk about the event, to educate about the event, and uh, we just thought it was a, a great topic to do on Encompass Live. So again, thank you, Krista, for having us. So today we're going to talk about the eclipse itself. Uh, we're going to hear from two Nebraska libraries in person this morning. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Megan and Shelley are, have joined us here uh, to talk about what they're doing at their libraries. And then we'll also talk about um, what some other libraries are, and communities around the state are doing. Um, and then talk about some uh, fun resources that your library can access to plan activities and uh, events for not only this one, but maybe for future events. So. Here goes. What exactly is a total eclipse? A total solar eclipse is when the moon passes directly in front of the sun, in other words, between the earth and the sun, and completely covers the sun for about two to three minutes, depending on where you are in, in the path. In general, uh, at least here in Nebraska, it's going to be about two and a half minutes. Uh, that we'll be able to see. Um, day briefly turns into night, uh, twilight actually, uh, and so it will seem very dark but not completely dark uh, before the moon's motion around the earth begins to move again away uh, from covering the sun. Now here in the United States, the eclipse path is approximately 70 miles wide. 
and it crosses the country from the very northwest part of Oregon all the way down um, to central um, to the Atlantic Ocean um, in uh, central South uh, Carolina. And this is the first time that the moon shadow has completely tra uh, traversed the United States coast to coast since 1918. Wow. So it's been almost 100 years. Now, there have been other solar eclipse events, but most of them not um, visible to most of the United States. Only for like parts. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, like the last one was 1979, I believe. Uh, just the very uh, northwest corner of the United States got part of it, you know. But, um, yeah, so not, not very much uh, that the rest of the United States has been able to see uh, for almost 100 years. Um, there are millions of Americans that are located either inside the path or within a day's drive. So that encompasses a lot of the United States uh, where people are going to be in that line is just where it's the total eclipse. Yes, outside that's of that it's partial and yes. there's even beyond that you can even get close to even seeing it. So pretty much the whole country gets it somewhere. Yes, yes. they will get so peace. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. So hundreds of thousands of visitors are going to be coming from outside the path of the eclipse um, to whatever is closest to them uh, in most cases. But we've already gotten calls here starting about six months ago uh, from people, um, you know, in uh, other way outside, you know, outside Nebraska, you know, asking at all. Yeah, I'm sorry, not from the Midwest at all. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> you know, um, places like Maine, you know, people are calling in, uh, where's the best place in Nebraska to see this? And, you know, I'm coming in to Nebraska to see this. Um, you know, uh, where can I stay? You know, things like that. So, yes, a lot of interest in, in um, visitors coming to not only our state, but a lot of states in the United States uh, for this uh, event. Um, and also, because of its... Uh, because it's been almost 100 years, this will probably be the most viewed total solar eclipse in history. Um, things have changed a lot from, since 1918. Our technology has changed. The science has changed. So that, you know, the prediction and uh, being able to tell where exactly it's going to go. And uh, our communications has changed, so it doesn't take uh, nearly as long. I mean, we have the internet now, so as soon as this was announced, you know, a couple of years ago, um, it, it's been growing in interest uh, because, you know, we can get the word out uh, more easily. Now, here in Nebraska, this is the path that it's going to take. Um, so it is going diagonally across the entire state from the far northwest corner all the way down to the far southeast corner. Um, some of the towns in Nebraska that are in the direct center of the path of the eclipse include Alliance, Stapleton, Arnold, Grand Island, Beatrice, and Falls <laughs> City, uh, with many other towns still well within the total path. Um, such a, And you can see the center path is the red line, and the total path is the, uh, is the grayer area. But um, Scotts Bluff, North Platte, Gothenburg, Cozad, Kearney, Hastings, York, and Lincoln, just to name a few. You know, there are lots of other little towns, you know, that are, um, that fall within this. Now, as we turn from the eclipse itself to how libraries um, can use this event, um, I'm going to transition with a couple of fun facts for your next trivia night. And if you're watching from outside Nebraska this morning, uh, you might want to look up these facts for your own state. Um, the last total solar eclipse seen in Nebraska was June 30th, 1954, so 60 years ago-ish. And then the next total solar eclipse Nebraska will be able to see after this one uh, is May 3rd, 2106, so 89 years from now. <laughs> so we probably won't be there. Yeah, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. And that's why uh, this is such a, um, a unique opportunity because it's not only a, a unique opportunity, you know, just the event itself, but it's a one in, once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. for a lot of us, you know, because we won't be around for the next one. <laughs> 
Oh, and then one other trivia question. How many states does the path of the eclipse touch across the United States? How many states? And the answer is... Well, you just said the map up. Yeah, get off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try count, um, the answer is 14, although um, several of those states only have tiny pieces, like little corners of their state where it, where it touches, but uh, it is a total uh, of 14. Okay. Um, so this morning, now that uh, we can... Uh, so that we can learn what different sizes of Nebraska libraries are planning for the eclipse, and it is all sizes. We are happy to have with us Megan Boggs um, from uh, talking to us remotely from the Seward Public Library, and Shelley Ludvoris here in the studio with us from the Lincoln City Libraries. So I'm going to begin with Megan. Good morning, Megan. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, Megan, first, if you would tell us a little bit about your role um, at the Seward Public Library, um, and then talk to us about what the planning uh, was that was involved um, in this event, and as well as actual programs and activities that you're hosting. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so I'm Megan Boggs, and I'm, an, I'm a library assistant here at the Seward Memorial Library. And um, being from a small library, we cover a lot of roles, and so I do a little bit of everything, everything from technology to um, maker programs, um, cataloging, so a lot of a lot of different things, and um, the eclipse planning. Uh, fell into my lap as well, although we all kind of work together as a staff um, to plan our events as well. Um, we started planning for our Eclipse event several months ago when we realized that we were going to be in the path of totality. We said we definitely have to do something, and so we started um, doing some planning um, on our own here. Um, after we started hearing a few rumblings from other places in the community that were planning events, we decided that it would be a really good idea if we um, called a meeting and started to partner with these other places throughout our community. Um, that way we could find out what all was happening, maybe we could do some cross promotion, and we could also try to target different audiences. Um, so. A few months ago, do you want to, oh, you want to you share your uh, websites? I know you showed that before. I can give you the sure. Yeah, let me get that up here. You should see the pop up where you can share your screen. Yeah, can you guys see it? Yeah, it's working. Got it. You can see my screen now. <laughs> Okay, so um, we we called a meeting. We um, uh, reached out to a few civic groups, some local businesses, and um, organizations that we knew were planning some eclipse events. That we also um, uh, whoops. Well, oh. Hang on a minute, Megan. I just uh... can you hear me now? I need to be by accident here. Yeah, just double check in my. There we go. All right. All right. Are we good? Yes. Okay. Um, so we we also advertised in our local paper that we were having a meeting for any and all parties who were interested in um, the total solar eclipse and planning events in the community of Seward. And so we got a wide variety um, of people to come, local business owners, um, civic group or um, uh, leaders. We got people from our local chamber of commerce and our um, visitors committee. And we um, ended up having having about seven or eight official Seward Eclipse viewing locations um, that we narrowed it down to and everybody kind of has their own unique audience that um, they're targeting. Um, it's kind of a unique day because it is a day that school is happening and so um, at the library we're, we weren't really going to be able to do 
um, a program during the eclipse for school-aged children. And so we knew that for ourselves, we wanted to target the audience of um, mostly story time age, preschool age children and their families, um, as well as anyone else, adults, um, um, older people, retired people who might be able to come to the library to view the eclipse. And so this is the website that we worked on um, with our partners. You can see um, we have some information about the eclipse. And on the side here, we have listed the official locations where people can go to view the eclipse um, in Seward. And um, as part of this group um, that the library kind of organized, we also developed some promotional materials. Um, so we did a rack card that was paid for by our Seward County Visitors Committee um, that uh, was distributed not only throughout Seward um, but in the um, throughout Nebraska and the general area um, to promote what was happening in our location. Um, we were also able to get some large banners printed for each location. So. Here's a picture of it hanging in front of our library um, to really, you know, make it stand out. It does. And, <laughs> and then we also had some postcards printed. So this is the uh, front side of the postcard and then the back side of the postcard. Uh, we are not uh, on the red line on that map that Mary showed earlier. Um, we're in the gray area. We get about one minute and 35 seconds of totality. Um, but hey, we're gonna melt that one minute and 35 <laughs> seconds for all it's worth. <laughs> um, and then we also, um, uh, our library is directly next to our post office. And they reached out to us um, as part of this group as well, and they are doing a special cancellation. Um, and so they'll be um, stamping this on the postcards, so that's pretty exciting as well. And then, let's see here, can I get back on just showing webcam? I'll show you a few things um, also. Um, well, so here's the rack card in person and the postcard. And um, as far as the event that we are specifically doing at our library, um, like I said, we're kind of gearing it towards preschool age mostly, um, and their families, of course. And um, we are starting at 11.30, uh, right about the time when the partial eclipse will start to happen. And we're going to start with um, some story time activities. We're going to do some um, uh, just books about the sun and the moon and that kind of thing. And then we're going to do some simple crafts. Um, one of them is something like this, where we've got um, one that's representing the moon and one that's representing the sun, and they're joined together by a little brad here so they can make the moon go in front of the sun. <laughs> so I think the preschool kids will like that a lot. Um, another thing that we're doing is a little activity with chalk. Um, and this one, you just take some, you know, a dark color, blue, black, of construction paper, and then you make um, a contact paper circle, and then they'll use chalk around the outside, and then just kind of smear it, and then peel that contact paper off so it looks like the sun shining from behind the moon when it's totally eclipsed. So those are a couple of simple craft activities that we'll be doing. Um, and then our Friends of the Library group is going to be providing a free lunch for everyone in attendance, and it's going to be sun-themed. So we're having hot as the sun dogs. <laughs> Sunny Delight, and then a special Eclipse Sunday. We're going to have the little, um, the little Sunday cups with the ice cream, and then we'll put a little um, Oreo cookie over the top of that. So, like, <laughs> That's great. 
<laughs> yes, a themed lunch. <laughs> um, and then after lunch, we will have our parking lot right outside of our library blocked off to traffic so everybody can move outdoors um, and it's, it's bring your own chairs, bring your own blankets, and people can set out there and set up camp and we'll have um, some outdoor activities as well, some sidewalk chalk, some bubbles. The main event, of course, is going to be watching um, the total solar eclipse. And um, we did um, receive a grant with some free eclipse glasses, so everyone who attends the event will be able to protect their eyes with those special solar eclipse glasses. Um, so that's pretty important. Um, and we, we did make sure um, as well to let everyone know that um, children cannot come unattended. Um, they do have to have their parents with them and parents are responsible for making sure that their children's eyes are covered because um, safety is of utmost importance. Um, and we also reached out to our local daycare centers and invited them to come to the library um, for this event. And we did have um, at least one who's going to bring a few children and teachers to the library to watch the solar eclipse. Um, and then we also have one program um, that we are pretty excited about leading up to the eclipse on, on the Thursday evening before on August 17th. We are having a professor from our local university, which is Concordia University, um, and he's going to come and do a presentation about the eclipse, why eclipses are important, why this one is so special, um, and also do some safety um, information as well for that. So. Um, we're excited about that. Uh, the other little things that we're doing, we're doing some outreach to some local civic groups and going there to their meetings and talking about the eclipse um, and talking about eye safety and protection, giving them some glasses. Um, so we're doing some outreach programs as well. Wow, very cool. Thank you so much, Megan. We really appreciate all of that. And, you know, great examples of you know, how a community can come together with their library um, to uh, promote not only the library and the community, but the event itself. And uh, I, I love your ideas, all very creative. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. You're welcome. Well, next, um, I think we'll hear from Shelley Rudavoris here, who is in the studio with us um, from Lincoln City Libraries. And good morning, Shelley. And thank you again uh, so much for being with us this morning. So I'm going to have you do the same thing that I asked uh, of Megan sure. to talk about the planning, you know, of the event uh, and activities you know, going into this, and and then uh, talk about the uh, activities and then the events themselves. Okay. You want to go to your slides? Yes. I can hit escape yes. over on Cuba. There's some stuff for you guys. I'm going to switch to yours. There we go. Right. So hi guys, my name is Shelley. I work at Lincoln City Libraries at the Bennett Martin Public Library, our downtown branch. Um, so we heard about a grant probably four or five months ago, um, and it was administered by Starnet Libraries, and the funding came through NASA at my library. I think there was maybe one library in Nebraska that got the full three. Well, actually two. two. They got the full. They got the yeah. full NASA at my library grant, mm -hmm. and we got the smaller one, which we are so happy with, <laughs> because we got um, Eclipse classes to give out to people. So that was our starting point and our incentive to plan some programming. Um, we also did not we can't really do on the day programming as much because school is in session um, and I was doing the planning for eight different branches so it needed to be something that could move around between the different branches and be easy, be easy to replicate. Um, so what we're doing is prepare for the solar eclipse at Lincoln City Libraries. Um, people who attend our prepare for the eclipse events which are aimed mostly at families will be able to pick up eclipse glasses and the way we're doing it is through um, a passport system so we will start everybody out together and then they will sleep off stations on their passport. Um, our hope with this is that everyone will get the safety information that they need 
through videos, through printed materials, to make sure that on the day of the actual eclipse, they are safe and everybody's eyes make it all the way through. Um, so here are some of the resources that I used in preparation for the event. Um, Starnet Libraries, obviously, is where we got the grant for our Eclipse glasses. So they've got an Eclipse Resource Center um, and a list of webinars that are really very useful both for people planning events and just so that your frontline staff will have an idea of how to answer questions that they get about the Eclipse. Um, we also have on there um, eclipse.aas.org resources, images, videos, um, which is free images that you can use in any promotional materials and also videos that have safety information, information as well as information just about what's happening during the eclipse. Um, so we've got a lot of organizations in Lincoln that are doing a lot of things on the day of the eclipse. Um, we decided to go so that it would be easy to replicate. Our expert comes from the videos on this website so that we can give people expert information sure. and easily bring it to all of our branches. Yeah. Um, we also had the next three resources are actually um, ones that were recommended to us by Zach Thompson over at the Mulewood Planetarium. He's been absolutely awesome as a person resource to get us in the right places. Um, so the first one is the Night Sky Network, and we do have a couple places nearby here in Lincoln that are members of the Night Sky Network. Um, and of course, they're not coming to mind immediately right now. Um, and then after that, uh, the Visions of the Future link actually gives some really awesome art pieces that are based on not just the eclipse, but also solar phenomena in general, if you wanted to do some decoration for your events, that kind of thing. Um, and then spaceplace.nasa.gov, Zach Thompson recommended that one as a resource which is ongoing. They send out things for display throughout the year once a month. Um, and also through our grant, we were recommended to send people places, and I have had to send several people to this already. Um, if you need discount Eclipse glasses in bulk for educational purposes, you could go to eclipsediscount.com or thousandoakoptical.com. I will warn you, as we're ramping up for this, places are selling out yes, Eclipse yeah. glasses. So the sooner the better that you can get to Eclipse glasses. And you have to be careful. I saw some... Oh, I can't remember, a library or some group caught posted in line. You have to be careful where you get them from. There are some that, you, if you don't get them from these known places, they're not necessarily safe. Yes. They're, you know, companies, organizations, getting them from China or something as mentioned is not, you know, they're trying to cash in on this. Um, so mm -hmm. go to a place that is, you know, recommended by NASA. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so to get them from, not just from anywhere on Amazon where you might be able to find them. Mm -hmm. um, we want to talk about what we're doing with glasses. We have that later. Um, at the end. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go to my next one here. This is just a rundown of my general program plan. I'm sorry, I don't have very many pretty pictures with my That's presentation right. today. <laughs> this um, is all part of the process. <laughs> yeah. uh, so at the beginning of the program is all of us gathering to watch a video and talk about what an eclipse is and explain about our stations that are coming up. This is really our opportunity to, to make sure that people are getting the safety information that they need before we hand them their eclipse boxes and drop them out on the street. Important um, priorities. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then everybody will have the chance to go to different stations. Um, I am definitely more of the A in the scheme person, so there are some more art type <laughs> activities in this. Our Eclipse Theatrical, uh, the kids are going to get a chance to act out what actually happens during an eclipse, and I've got a nice um, script going that we will talk about specific points of what happens during the eclipse during each step of this. They'll get to act it out. Some kids will be planetary bodies, and other kids will get to stand as if they were on the Earth and watch what happens. Um, we will also have a pinhole viewer station. So basically, I've been collecting boxes for months and months, and I still need more probably yeah. because the response has been crazy. Um, everybody is going to get a chance to build a pinhole viewer. Um, and I have a, a backup resource that I will show in just a minute that also has to do with the pinhole viewer. Um, and then we're going to have a coloring station. So the Eclipse Dragon is a resource that I found from NASA, and it's basically um, an explanation of historically in China how people viewed the eclipse. If that's an actual hotline, you should really click on it to open it up and show it up. Sure. 
That's just very interesting. Yeah. It was such a beautiful scale. We trust it. <laughs> it's from the yeah. yeah. Let's see, hit escape and see if it just came up separately. They're hidden. That's probably there, yeah. Okay. Ah. Yeah, yes. And you can make it full screen if you want to on the top there. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Eclipse Dragon. He's kind of a fun looking little guy. Um, there are some facts on the handout, and then kids will get a chance to color the Eclipse Dragon and take it home with them. Uh, this is pretty basic. We're trying to hit and make sure that we have activities which are accessible to kids of all ages. Mm -hmm. And I love the cultural connection. Yes. 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 That's very unique mm -hmm. and uh, but totally wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let me see here. Ah, uh, Dr. People in China thought that a solar eclipse happened when a giant dragon swallowed the sun. That's the, the origins of this. So are you going to swallow the sun? I don't know. Okay, we're to finish out. I should be able to go to current slide. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is some self-led activities. Uh, so the yardstick eclipse is an activity that we got through our StarNet grants. You have a yardstick. On one end is a teeny tiny bead that represents um, the moon, and then on the other end is a slightly larger bead which represents the earth. You get to see exactly how the eclipse would happen by moving the yardstick. Um, the sun and moon size experiment is a little bit of the same thing, but it's in a, a much larger format. So I've got big yellow plates and then teeny little coins, and the kids are going to get a chance to walk off the distance so that they can get more of an idea of Sort of how <laughs> impressive this is. It's going to be in exactly the right position. Yeah. And, and when it's actually a, a concrete thing like that, they're mm -hmm. more likely to understand. That's the hope. Yeah, yeah. they have to be involved in it. Yeah. Maybe they'll be a little bit more in understanding. Yeah. That's great. And then I've got um, a matching activity, that, which is through NASA and it is accessible through my resource list called How Big, How Far, How Old, How Hot. Um, I sort of adjusted it to make it more. Uh, accessible outside of a classroom setting. Um, there's 10 in each section in how big, how far, how hot, how old. Um, and kids will get a chance to see if they can organize either planetary bodies or it's like meteors, the sun, the top of a lightning bolt, that kind of thing into the correct order. And then open up an envelope and say, oh, you were right, or here's how things are different that you might not have expected. Um, and also we'll have a video education area with some of those videos that were available through our free resources link and some that are available through StarNet um, playing on a loop so that people can sit and hang out and learn a little bit more that way too. Um, our passport will work by people marking off three of the five stations and once they've done three of five then they can stop by the front desk and get their Eclipse glasses. But the safety information at the beginning is not optional. Everybody has to do the safety information. Very cool. Uh, and one last thing that I will show you before we go here. Um, so let me see this. this out. Okay, so this was one of the free resources also from NASA. Um, it's an Eclipse viewing card, and all I did was adjust it so that the card is on a full sheet instead of a half sheet. You punch a hole in the center. And then the bottom of the sheet is your white part, and you can hold one part in front of the other. And that way, if we run out of stuff for pinhole viewers, and or if we so run out of like a simplified a, pinhole viewer, it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you just wow. face away from the eclipse and hold it and wait until that safe time to look at the eclipse, which is only that about a minute and a half, maybe yes. even less than maybe yeah. like minute fourteen. Yeah. I want to say yes. What a great idea. Or an alternate with the eclipse glasses, and how yeah. simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Create a single sheet. We always have paper at the library. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Well, thank you so much. We really uh -huh. appreciate hearing what Olympic Cities is doing. So, yeah, it's awesome. Thank you again for being with us this morning. Um, Well, as, as we kind of wind down towards the second half um, and last quarter of our program here today, I did want to present some more ideas, um, can escape me, can see uh, some more ideas about what um, people in 
Nebraska are, and what libraries in Nebraska are doing uh, for the eclipse. And we've we heard from, the top, from yeah. there inside. So get it full screen. There and uh, we've heard from Megan uh, from uh, uh, a smaller uh, library setting, but uh, in a smaller community. But what they're doing, you know, to work together, um, and from Shelley, and uh, from a larger library setting, and what they're doing, you know, as well as some of the things that Lincoln is doing as a community. And um, so I wanted to touch on some other uh, activities that are happening around the uh, state. Uh, for example, in Beatrice, um, the public library there is hosting a special Saturday family story time. Um, a week before the eclipse, you know, to kind of educate um, families and children as to, you know, what all's what what all an eclipse is about, um, as well as you know, pass on uh, other activities that are going on. Um, they uh, worked as a community with Homestead National Monument, which is very close to to Beatrice. Um, Homestead National Monument has activities going all day, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of the eclipse um, with special guests, uh, Dr. Amy and friends from the PBS kids show, Ready, Jet, Go, which I thought was pretty um, impressive by itself, but they also have the Planetary Society's Bill Nye. Yeah. Uh, yes, Bill, Nye Bill, Bill Nye the Science. Yes, Bill Nye the Science guy is going to be at the Homestead. Um, and when I looked up, um, Entrance to Homestead is free, and all of the activities um, for that weekend are going to be free and open to the public. So um, just, a, you know, just a little FYI there. Um, in another part of the state, in Grand Island, which is almost exactly um, in the direct center of the path of the eclipse, they are also, the public library there is also working with the community rather than being the center uh, of the focus. Um, the public library recently hosted a presentation about the eclipse um, by a speaker from the Hastings Museum. So um, they tapped into their local uh, resources to bring someone in, you know, to talk about the eclipse. Um, Stir Museum of the Prairie Pioneer, also out towards Grand Island, um, that day is going, the day of the Eclipse, August 21st, is going to be free and open to the public the entire day with many activities planned for the whole day before, um, during, which is the viewing, obviously, and then after the event. So gates open at 8 o'clock um, and activities end at, four, um, activities start at 9 o'clock, end at 4 o'clock. But um, they have lots of things going on out there for the eclipse that day. And then uh, while Seward and Lincoln libraries have did, demonstrated what they're doing individually as well as part of the community, um, Beatrice and Grand Island are just two examples of how libraries and, can, and communities are coming together um, even more. Um, so uh, just lots of different ways that libraries and communities and organizations, whether it's your astronomy club, or um, the local museums, the local colleges, uh, the local high school, uh, say your science teacher, you know, do a presentation. Um, all can come together to uh, do events and programs and activities around this type of event. Um, using local talent and resources to educate the public, um, as well as promote, promote the libraries, the local culture, the communities and you know let people know that these are places that you can go to find out more about it you know, so which I, I think is really cool and then last but certainly not least um, and Shelly has uh, actually touched on some of these I wanted to touch on internet resources that everyone can access you know for not only the eclipse but for these types of events and she did um, mention um, Starnet but I'm going to start with Starnet here. This is the Starnet um, website, um, and when you go there uh, right now, uh, there for a while, this wasn't the main thing, but practically the first thing that comes up when you go to Starnet is about the uh, eclipse. And I wanted to 
actually. And that, if you go to um, Eclipse, oh, sorry. Um, I'm not doing that. Well, what I was trying to get to is there is a whole section in StarNet for resources. And once you find the resources page, um, it will talk about the uh, Eclipse resources. And as Shelly mentioned earlier, there are videos that you can use. There are um, paper. Uh, there are paper resources that you can print out for your library. Um, pictures. Um, publications um, that you can get information for or uh, from. You know, maybe that's it. Upcoming events. Yeah. Um, I looked at this myself too. Oh, here's yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, 2017 solar eclipse, and uh, it should come up with all the resources you know that you can access for this. That's that's all free, and um, there are oh, yes, yeah, lists of hands-on activities, educational resources, and this is what I was trying to say not very well. Uh, mm -hmm. Books and articles, uh, videos, webinars, um, eclipse websites that they link to. Um, and ways that you can partnership with uh, other organizations in your community, um, all kinds of awesome material. So that's why I was saying earlier that this is one of the best resources um, mm -hmm. for the Eclipse. That, it took uh, me a lot. And I like here there is something that it goes. It's motion materials created by fellow librarians. Yes, like that. that's even like better. Yes. Adding to their resources. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so you know you can see uh, what your fellow librarians have considered, you know, the important things or what they've accessed the most. Yeah. So, um, and there are um, Spanish resources there uh, as yeah. well uh, if you need them, and so great resource uh, for uh, accessing information about the eclipse, you know, for your activities and programs. Um, NASA is the other one. Um, and Shelley also mentioned uh, NASA at my library, and they got um, a small piece of a grant for Eclipse grant uh, glasses. Uh, Wilson Public Library in Cozad, Nebraska, got a full scholarship or a full grant, and then I believe Chevron mm -hmm. uh, Public Library was the second one that got a full grant, you know, for uh, NASA at my library for materials you know, for this. So. Um, See if I could bring up their resources. NASA's Eclipse site, that's it. Okay. Yeah, and again, um, this is information about the different types of eclipse. Uh, lunar, in this particular case, um, solar. Um, for our event in 2017. And then if you click on the um, information here on the right, it will take you to their entire uh, Eclipse Across America page with the information about the science, um, information about safety, how you can uh, include the public in your uh, programming, um, education, and uh, various events. So again, another great um, internet resource. Um, so, and they also have videos and images. Um, Interviews with scientists, which I thought was really kind of cool. Um, downloadables, again, things that you can download um, and uh, print. Um, apps that you can use for the Eclipse, a press kit for promoting your events, and uh, all kinds of great resources. And then more Nebraska specific, um, I kind of stumbled on this one. Um, I don't know why I didn't come across this one originally, but um, essentially what it's doing is a countdown, uh, 26 days, 2 hours, 10 minutes, and 3 seconds from now, 
um, but at different places across the um, across the state. And I came upon this by accident too. I was normally going to things like NASA and uh, yes, the official sites here. And I was trying to find where is the official eclipse in the United States site. And I'm not really, I think there is some like American eclipse or something. But then this came up and I was looking for things in Nebraska. Yes. And it's a few of the cities that are having a really have kind of, um, group together. Yes. To share their resources across the state. I think it's really cool. Yes, that is very true. And um, so if you click on a particular city, um, then it lets you know uh, where you can go for information, and it says, "Let us be your tour guide," and uh, you know, takes you where you can get information as to what's going on in your area of the state. So um, I thought that was great. Now, uh, Christy, you just mentioned um, what I think is probably the Great American yes, Eclipse, yeah, and um, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now this is one of the first ones that I came across mm -hmm. um, after StarNet, and again, it has some great resources, um, best places to see the eclipse, um, the maps, eclipse uh, visitors and traffic. Uh, also, like Shelley mentioned, quality Classic. eclipse yeah. merchandise. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Get the things that are safe to use. You know. I love great the t-shirt, glow-in-the-dark t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, so it's a really fun website with a lot of information and um, uh, like under totality, best places to view, uh, basics, facts of the day, um, the maps were great. Um, I ended up using a couple of maps for various, for uh, the blog posts that I did here at the commission about the eclipse, uh, talking about various resources, and so just a wealth of information here. So anyway, that's pretty much all I have this morning, and I wanted to thank Shelly again, and to Megan. Yeah. Um, one last thing to mention. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the Nebraska Library Commission did receive um, a grant, actually a you just apply like somewhere to get them. Yes, really. yes. Mary Jo Ryan here at the commission applied and received three thousand uh, eclipse glasses mm -hmm. uh, to be distributed to um, libraries across the state, but mainly to the Nebraska library systems. So, if you are a library in Nebraska who already has programs planned for the eclipse contact Mary Jo Ryan here at the commission or your uh, library system director, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the Western, Mid Plains, Central, um, Western Central Plains, Plains. Southeast, <laughs> and, and Three, three rivers. rivers. Yeah. Yeah. So those are our four um, yeah. library systems. Um, they um, either already have glasses or will receive them soon from mm -hmm. us. Um, and these are specifically for libraries that have programs planned related yes. to the eclipse. Yes, already. So you yes. already have some sort of plan, programming yes. in place. And I believe that's some sort of a requirement from where we got them from. So yes, that um, is correct. That is some sort of thing. So, yes. um, so if you are Nebraska, contact your systems yes. and yeah. see if they have them. Um, Three Rivers, I'm delivering their systems next week, their systems lessons next week at their yes. annual meeting on August 4th. That's correct. So if you're attending the meeting, you may be able to come some there or after that, um, Anika Ramirez will have her. Yes. And I think all the other systems have somehow gotten there yes. already. The other three have gotten there. theirs. Yes, because they are they are distributing. Yeah. yeah. But just remember, supplies are limited. Yes, we only yes. have three thousand. <laughs> yes. And, yes. and, and you, you think of three thousand as being a lot, but when it comes to all the libraries across the state, mm -hmm. uh, across the state, no, <laughs> it, it's not a lot. So <laughs> and when you have to distribute them, so a um, much bigger population. Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, Anyway. One thing that I just, one thing that I had thought of too to mention is that, you know, we're all planning these wonderful events, and we're hoping for good weather yes, <laughs> so that it's not cloudy um, and we can, you yeah, know, I fully should. take advantage of this. But um, NASA on their website, they are going to have a live stream um, that shows uh, the eclipse. And so, if for some reason we do have bad weather and we can't go outside and watch it ourselves, we can show that on the big screen in our library. Yeah, that is a great reminder, Megan. Thank you very much. 
Um, now, I do understand just from basic reading that uh, we have about a 75% chance of good weather, uh, clear weather that we can see. <laughs> that was, that was, I think we need to look into like checking the farmer's almanac to see what they predict for what it should be on, on that day. And I don't know. Yeah. And, and that was just yesterday that I saw that number. So hopefully, you know. The um, odds are good. Yes, the odds are good. And hopefully as we get closer that that number will increase. But, um, you know. Predictions at the moment, it looks like about 75%, yeah, which is actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you everyone for joining us this morning for this, and thank you, Krista, for having us. Of course, I appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions or anything you want to know more about? I think we've covered a lot. Yes. That people are just great ideas. Um, we still have about five minutes. Does anybody have anything cool or interesting or different you're doing at your libraries that you want to share with us? Um, type into your uh, go to webinar uh, interface and we can um, let people get and give people some more ideas of where places to go to do cool things. We've got about 20 libraries online today with us today, so that's pretty cool from all across the city. And even if you don't uh, let us know here on Encompass Live right now uh, what it is you're doing at your libraries, send me an email um, and let me know what you're doing. And uh, I will be glad to pass that on. You know, right, and, do you still have some more blog posts you're going to be doing? I am going to do one more blog post. Um, I did a series of blog posts about the eclipse starting uh, about a month ago, uh, maybe six weeks ago. Um, and each one was divided up into uh, different types of things, you know, related to the e eclipse. But I'm going to do one more, and I, I do want to promote, you know, continually uh, what libraries are doing. Yeah. So my email is um, mary.sowers at nebraska.gov, and feel free to drop me a line, and I would love to hear from you. You should mention before we go, um, one thing, if libraries have access to a 3D printer in their building mm -hmm. or anywhere else, uh, NASA has free printables for pinhole viewers in the shape of Nebraska with <laughs> half of the totality. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. I need mean, one of those. Yeah. a few so far for prices. Oh, so they're really cute. Very cool. Uh. cool. The 3D printer here, I'll have to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's typing anything in now. That's cool. Um, anything else? Any last words? Be safe. Yes, definitely <laughs> be safe, but definitely go fun. out and uh, and uh, take part in the activities and uh, and and the viewing. Yeah. So. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary and Shelley. And thank, thank you. you. Um, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, can you type to, if you type in Encompass Live on there? Um, the show has been recorded as usual and will be posted on our website, which, which so far in the world, Encompass Live, we are the only thing called Encompass Live. So if you Google that, you come up with us. <laughs> very, very cool. convenient, yes. <laughs> um, it will be available here on our website. Um, so our upcoming shows, but here is where our archives all go. Uh, it'll be at the top of the list. The most recent ones always are posted at the top. I'll have a link to the recording, a link to the presentations um, that both Mary and Shelley had here. Um, so you've got all those links that they mentioned there. And then the links that um, a couple that um, Mary was posting on here will include those as well so you can get to them quickly. Um, should have the recording up and ready for you this afternoon, um, as long as YouTube cooperates with the uploading and processing of it. And I will email everyone who attended, all of you who attended today, and anybody who registered today for today's show will get an email letting me know, letting you know that it's available as we post it publicly also to our website. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is connecting students to courses, experts, and virtual field trips. Um, this is a session that's actually done up in the Southeast Library System area. Um, they did a teacher's training day, um, a library media specialist training day, so for schools. Um, and this is a session that was very popular and was requested to have become an online one for people who couldn't attend, so we put it on the show. Um, so we'll learn about doing virtual field trips, using online resources to bring um, students, bring more information to the students. Nebraska has a great distance learning association um, that um, partners with, uh, with um, schools and libraries to do this. Um, staff from um, the ESU um, educational service units and um, the distance learning 
manager from Lincoln, um, Nebraska, our Lincoln Public Schools will be here to talk about what they're all doing. So I definitely sign up for that next week. So that's something from the, the school libraries side. Um, and any of our other shows we have during our schedule, we've got almost all of August up here. I've got, I'm in, in talks with more, so you'll see more shows come up on the schedule, so keep an eye on this um, and register for anything you want to attend. Um, also, we are on Facebook and Compass Live Viz, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do give us a like over there. And you'll see we post reminders. Here's my reminder to log in for today's show. Um, when our recordings are ready, I post them on here. When any new show has been added, um, I post them on here. So um, if you are big on Facebook, give us a like and we'll keep up with what we're doing over there. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very yep. much, everyone. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.